Kyle Rittenhouse defended himself from multiple attacks against his life within a very short period of time. He's a minor, so normally I wouldn't show his picture, but you've probably already seen his picture before anyway because the media keeps throwing it around because they hate him so much, so I'm using it to remind you of what he looks like. Now, Kyle went to Kenosha, Wisconsin, which is about 20 miles, that's it, from where he lives, it's in order to help defend the property and people there. There were riots going on, of course, after the justified shooting of Jacob Blake that had occurred a few days before. Now, he went again to try and help in a place where police weren't doing their jobs, let's say. Now, after being bashed in the head with a skateboard, attacked and chased, probably wasn't even thinking clearly by the end of the night, he was stomped on when he was on the ground, people were trying to kill him. None of this, I don't think, is even up for dispute. Now, I don't really care when and where and how he got his rifle. There's some people arguing over whether he legally could own it or not because he was 17. Uh, the truth is, if he didn't have it, he'd probably be dead. And if he was dead as a result of these rioters, that probably would not have made the news because it doesn't align with the agenda of the mainstream media. You know it's true. And so instead, they're just grandstanding about these technicalities on whether or not he, he fits the bill and whether or not he could have open carried that rifle or not. He needed the rifle, and he had it, and he used it. And by the way, he's the only one out of the four people involved who didn't have a criminal record. The three people that he shot, the three people that attacked him, all did. One of them had a handgun. So he shouldn't have had the handgun if he's a felon. But, you know technicalities. They just choose the ones that they that matter to them, that align most with their narrative. It seems that the media hates nothing more than a white guy or a white kid who stands up, who doesn't back down, who just stands for what he thinks is right. It's like the Covington kids thing, where they just, you had these kids standing there with MAGA hats on, and that's all they were doing. But that was too much. That just sent the, the media into this like whirlwind of chaos. They, they just, they hated Nick Salmon, who was the, the main kid shown. Hated him because he just stood his ground and that's it. And so in this case, you've got an armed young white guy, right, doing the right thing. That's their worst nightmare. Imagine if he'd been wearing a MAGA hat. I guess that would have taken it to a whole new level, right? But you had, in Kenosha, Wisconsin, overwhelmed, undermanned police who weren't allowed to do what needs to be done. There were police there that were afraid to get out of these armored vehicles. If you watched the videos, I'm not going to show them because of you know, copyright reasons and so on, but Kyle tried to turn himself into police after you know, the shooting had happened because they arrest you regardless. If you're involved in a shooting, even if it's fully justified, you're still going to get arrested and a statement taken. So he tried to turn himself into th these police vehicles. The police didn't stop. The police didn't get out and arrest him and talk to him and see what he was surrendering, surrendering himself for. But would you? Imagine this, okay? You're a cop in a full police uniform in a place there where Black Lives Matter, this frankly terrorist organization, is flooded the streets, is destroying stuff, and you know that you can't shoot them if they attack you. Because if you do, you'll be the, the villain, your life will be destroyed, it'll be your family who has to deal with the repercussions. You know, when, the, when these rioters show up on your front lawn, for example, would you get out of the vehicle? Probably not, and those cops didn't. The truth is, if the cops were doing their job, Kyle wouldn't have had to be there, and he certainly wouldn't have had to have used his, his weapon, because things wouldn't be being destroyed en masse. There wouldn't be violent attacks going on. And I know that the Black Lives Matter organization has been promoting police units being defunded. Well, in effect, this is the same. If the police aren't willing or able through bureaucracy and politics to do what needs to be done, then they're already handcuffed and they're already kind of useless. You end up with like a Portland situation, right, where more or less the police were told to stand down and not arrest Antifa, resulting in what we know has happened in Portland, you know, or Seattle, where they gave up the police precinct, handed it over to Antifa and Black Lives Matter, handed over three blocks of the city, told them they could have their own little country over there. You know, the CHAZ as it was called, the, so the, the autonomous zone. That took place. So Kyle was there, and he defended himself, when police wouldn't and couldn't. And there's the thing. People assume that police have to defend you. If they, they see an attack taking place, they just have to step in. But that's not true. That's gone all the way to the United States Supreme Court. In a 
famous case called Castle Rock vs. Gonzalez, it was said that police do not have a duty to protect you. They can. It's their job, but they don't have to. They're not forced. It's up to them. Who has the, the duty to protect you is you. And that's one of the kind of major points of gun rights advocates. It's police may not be there, or police may not want to. Police may not do their jobs, and so on. But you, you can have a gun, you can defend yourself, you can defend your family, and you have a duty to do both. From bad people, right? And what we're starting to see here is like sort of what happens in Britain, where police are disarmed or otherwise neutered. And so when someone shows up with a gun, you know, the bad guy with a gun, well, police don't show up because they don't have equivalent force, they don't have equivalent arms, and they're afraid. It's the same sort of thing. In fact, in England, there have been a bunch of videos of Black Lives Matter rioters chasing the police around for sport. The same thing. Anyway, back to Kyle. He shot three of his attackers, and he killed two of them. And all of the videos that I've seen showed a clear case of self-defense. I don't want to see people dying on the streets in riots. I don't want to see any of that. But for those three that are the worst shot, and for the two that died, it kind of falls under the umbrella of play stupid games, win stupid prizes. If you don't want somebody to shoot you, don't attack them. Don't riot. Don't destroy property. These were lessons that most of us learned when we were pretty young. We didn't even have to be spelled out. And yet here we are. Now Kyle, who did defend himself, he did run first, in fact, and then he d defended himself with his gun. The 17-year-old has been charged with first-degree murder. Now, first-degree murder implies that it's both intentional and premeditated. H how? Are we supposed to believe that he planned to be attacked? Because he was attacked, and it was only then that he actually fired. Only then, when his life was in danger, that he actually fired. Of course it wasn't premeditated. This is political grandstanding of the worst kind. The type that perverts the justice system. And the media just goes along with it, as if, uh, yes, that kid's evil, just throw the book at him. It's horrendous. Tucker Carlson, to his credit, did cover this. And after that, of course, those on, those on the collective left screamed. But I noticed that CNN ran a headline called, Tucker Carlson Justifies Violence. Now, firstly, self-defense is justified violence, but besides that, what have CNN and MSNBC been doing for months as these riots have been taking place? Every time they called them peaceful protests, they were justifying the violence. Every time they made excuses for senators who were accosted in Washington DC, like Rand Paul, for example, they were justifying violence. Every time they downplayed these, these murders that have taken place, they were justifying violence. Every time. And yet they, they say that Tucker Carlson talking about a kid defending himself is justifying violence. I mean, it's just so audacious. Now, I was talking to someone earlier who thinks that the Democrats are going to start disavowing the violence and the riots because it's helping Trump too much. And it is helping Trump. He thinks that they will turn on a dime and basically start opposing the riots. That You'll just suddenly see the, the switch. I don't think so. I don't think the Democrats at large, the major figures, are going to condemn these riots. And I think the reason is because they're delusional. Because they still think that Biden is going to win no matter what. I mean, they're the same people who are like, Hillary's got a 99% chance of winning. They're those people. They're the people who pen these articles to the effect of, Trump still maybe has a chance if he does the right things. I mean, those people. And there are also people who want a communist takeover. And the foot soldiers of that communist takeover are the Black Lives Matter and Antifa rioters that we're talking about. And I don't think they're going to condemn those people. They don't want to disenfranchise those foot soldiers. So I don't really see it changing, even though politically it would make sense for them to do so. Now, Kyle has an, an attorney, fortunately. He's not being defended by a public defender, which I was really concerned about, especially in a city such as it. So he's being defended by attorney Lynn Wood. Now, if that name sounds familiar to you, it should, because that's the attorney that Nick Sandman had. Nick Sandman is the Covington kid, you know, with the MAGA hat and so on. Yeah, who ended up suing the Washington Post and CNN and getting them to 
well, give him money for the fact that they defamed him, referred to him as racist and white supremacist, etc. So Linwood is now defending Kyle. Hopefully, after these murder charges are thrown out, he'll go after the media that have slammed and slandered him too. But if you want to support his defense, his right to defense, you can. The website for Linwood's, you know, for Linwood to actually help is fightback.law. Yes, fightback.law. GoFundMe removed the page supporting Kyle's defense. They just removed it. They continue to host pages that support Antifa's bail. That's perfectly fine. You know, and by the way, that's even for crimes that haven't been committed yet. There's a, a GoFundMe that has over a million dollars, well over a million dollars toward it, to get people out of jail for crimes that haven't even yet been committed. They're encouraging future crimes by Antifa and Black Lives Matter people. I mean, they ought to get GoFundMe classified as terroristic in itself, certainly as an accomplice of sorts, but it's, it's not okay, apparently, to help fund Kyle's defense. Now, if you go to fightback.law to help with Kyle's real defense, there are two sections on, on the front page. There's one for just regular donations toward uh, Linwood's overall mission of suing these leftist media outlets who constantly lie, which is a noble goal, but if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see a specific section that says donations for Kyle Rittenhouse. If you go there, you'll actually donate to his, his defense, and he certainly deserves and need one, needs one. I can only imagine what it would be like to be 17 years old and terrified, and just now find out you actually have a lawyer, you thought you were going to have a public defender, after having what would have to be the the fright of your life. I mean, multiple people. It wasn't just the three people that tried to kill him. There, were, there was a, a, a crowd developing trying to kill him before he started shooting. And the shooting is what got rid of the crowd. So give him all the support that you can. Thanks. Wait, if you enjoyed that video, please remember to like and share. I can't grow without you. Also, if you want to be reliably notified of new videos, don't forget to subscribe to the newsletter. If you're able to support the production of these videos, I'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe at Subscribestar, or maybe get one of the healthier products, or even get some merch.